Victory Church, welcome to our day of fellowship and worship. We get to be together in the Word. We get to be together gathered with all the saints of heaven doing what we are made to do best, and that's worship our King. So if you're here in the house, I'm going to ask you to stand with us, and we're going to pray. Welcome, online family. We love you. We bless you. Hey, if you're here with us right now, go ahead and share this in your socials so others will be invited to come and fellowship with us in the Lord. All right, let's pray and then we'll receive our shofar. Holy God, glorious, perfect, amazing King, we're here for you. We're here for you, Jesus. We're here to honor you. We're here to glorify you, and I thank you, Lord, for all the benefits of fellowship. I thank you for all the benefits of being not alone before you, God, but in a body, in a community of believers where we get to encourage one another, where we get to draw near and lift up the name of Jesus together. What a great privilege we have, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together today here at Jubilee, online and in person with all the believers all worldwide who have gathered this day to fellowship in the glory of the Lord, to fellowship in praise, in giving and ascribing to you, Lord, glory and honor and majesty and power. So here we are, Lord, we present ourselves living sacrifices to you today to lift up the name of your son because as we glorify Jesus, the Father is glorified. We honor you. We exalt you now in the perfect name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord, our Messiah. Amen. Amen. at it so they're gonna help us learn it it's called with my whole heart and it's out of Psalms 9 and 11 and 15 so I'm gonna teach you first the chorus and then I'm gonna teach you the bridge and then we'll go ahead and we'll sing the whole song in the Lord I put my trust the Lord is in his holy temple, his throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the sons of men. In the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in his holy temple, his throne is in heaven. The Lord tests the righteous. Sing it again. In the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in his holy temple, his throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the sons of men, in the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in his holy temple, his throne is in heaven. The Lord tests the righteous. Good job. Let's do it one more time. In the Lord I put my trust. In the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in his holy temple. The throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the sons of men. In the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in his holy temple. The throne is in heaven. The Lord tests the righteous. Ooh. sing what's called the bridge, all right? I 
will praise you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous words. I will be glad and will rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O oh Most High. I will praise you, O oh Lord. Here we go. I will praise you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous words. I will be glad. I will be glad and will rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O oh Most High. I will praise you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous words. I will be glad. I will be glad. We'll rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O oh Most High. Good. Let's sing the chorus. In the Lord, I put my trust. In the Lord, I put my trust. The Lord is in holy temple, his throne is in heaven, his eyes behold the sons of men, in the Lord I put my trust, the Lord is in his holy temple, his throne is in heaven, the Lord tests the righteous, in the Lord I put my trust, the Lord is in his holy temple, his throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the sons of men In the Lord I put my trust The Lord is in His holy temple His throne is in heaven The Lord tests the righteous Ooh, oh, oh. Ooh, oh, oh. All right, let's try this bridge again. I will praise you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous words. I will be glad and will rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O oh I will praise you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous words. I will be glad and will rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O oh Most High. Excellent. Let's go to the top of the song. Well done. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Lord, who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works right. Speaks the truth in his heart. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle. Lord, who may dwell in your holy hill. He whose tongue is gracious and does good to his neighbor. Doesn't judge his friend. In the Lord I put my trust. In the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in His holy temple. His throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the sons of men. In the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in His holy temple. His throne is in heaven. The Lord tests the righteous.
Lord, who may abide? Who may abide in your tabernacle? Lord, who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Lord, who may dwell in your holy hill? He whose tongue is gracious and does good to his neighbor. Does judge his friend. In the Lord I put my trust. In the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in His holy temple, the stone is in heaven. His eyes behold the sons of men, in the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in His holy temple, the stone is in heaven. The Lord tests the righteous. with all we've got. Yes, Lord, you are worthy. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous words. I will be glad and will rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Yes, I will. I will be glad and will rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, almost high. In the Lord I put my trust. In the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in His holy temple. The throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the sons of men. In the Lord I put the Lord is in His holy temple, the throne is in heaven. The Lord tests the righteous, the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in His holy temple, the throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the sons of men, the Lord I put my trust. The Lord is in His holy the throne is in heaven. The Lord tests the righteous. Ooh, oh, oh. Ooh, oh, oh. Ooh, oh, oh. Ooh, oh, oh. Let's do this bridge one more time. Yes, Lord. You know, as we lift up our praise, we lift up a banner of the Lord's name over every principality, over every spirit. As we lift up his praise, he establishes an ambush over the enemy. So we are going to praise you this morning, Lord, because you are worthy. I will praise you. Here we go. I will praise you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. Yes, Lord. I will tell of all your marvelous words. I will be glad and will rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name almost. my whole heart, I will tell of all your marvelous words, I will be glad and will rejoice in you, I will sing praise to 
Beautiful Jubilee. So as I was praying into this morning, uh, the Lord said, tell them the king is here, the one spoken of in Song of Solomon, that one, your bridegroom, your king. <laughs> the king of kings is here to love you, to receive your worship. He loves your worship, your adoration, no matter where you are in your life right now. He receives your praise, and yes, he sets ambushes against your enemy. You know this song we're gonna sing, it's from Song of Solomon 2.14. Show me your face, let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. He is your beloved, you are beloved. He is your beloved, you are your beloved, and he is yours. May you know the voice that is sweet of the Lord and his face that is so lovely. May you see him gazing upon you. You are accepted in the beloved with his smile with compassion. He sees you. He knows where you are right here, right now. So we just lift up very personally between you and the Lord this song. May you just be so blessed by your King of Kings, your bridegroom, your mighty one who is here for you. And we just give you all praise right now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. To behold your face, Jesus. To hear your your face, mighty Jesus, oh, just to hear your Hear your voice, 
receive Jesus as your light. His word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. He illuminates your heart. He is the light. Oh, can you see the light shining in his face? atmosphere I'd like us to read Psalm 34 out loud together let the words that we read just be heard with our ears believed with our heart 
spoken out loud to the Lord. Psalm 34. I was going to do two Psalms, but I'm just going to do Psalm 34. Psalm 34 up, just tell the Lord you love him, how powerful he is, how good he is. He's Lord over everything. He's king. He is our bridegroom lover that sought us out and found us and calls us back to return every day. Praise you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. It's okay. I think we've already, I think we may, I think we hit the mark already, so we're good, we're good. You guys okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, always, I know what to do when, when, you, when the song doesn't come up, we just take an offering. <laughs> no, no, we do the offering in worship, so before we engage and visit and say hello, let's take, prepare our heart to give. Lord, you are worth everything. You gave us everything that we possess. We thank you for the breath we breathe, for the money that you've given us, that we've received, the work we've done, the success we've had, the tests we've been through, the trials that we're in. We thank you. you. We thank you. We thanksgiving over everything. And we praise you for your bringing forth the good thing you planned in your heart over every one of our lives but first you we give you our first our tithes our offerings first receive them electronically cash or checks or however we gave already what we're giving this week we bless you we praise you and we worship you Jesus you're our prosperity Jesus, you're our health and you're our wealth. And that's how we're coming out of the crisis. In your health and in our, your wealth. In Jesus' name. Praise you, Jesus. In your health and in your wealth, we're coming out of the crisis. In Jesus' name. That is the decree the Lord has spoken over us. And we declare. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead as we worship. Um, Let's go ahead and give. You can, if you've got an offering to put in the buckets that you, or with cash, there's envelopes or checks. Otherwise, you can do it all electronically. And let's just worship for a moment. We're going to sing a hymn that's if you've been around the church for a minute, you might know it. And if the lyrics don't come up, we'll just do verse one in the chorus. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So
great things he has taught us great things he has done our great rejoicing through Jesus the Son but you Give them some praise. Praise you, Jesus. Glorious King. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All right. I love when they outshout the drums. Yeah, David, yeah. you got going, man. That's... <laughs> you know, when praise erupts and the Spirit of God begins to magnify the Lord and we magnify the Lord in the Spirit of God, you can pick it up like a wind and you can begin to soar. Yeah. You don't need to stay where you are. You can go up higher. And thank God. David, way to go. I liked you going higher right there. We like that. All right, let's stand up, honor the Lord, thanking him that's not just the offering in this bucket. It's representing all the giving we've done electronically throughout the week. Lord, we want to just acknowledge that this is to you, the Most High. Melchizedek, the King of Righteousness, our Lord, our High Priest Jesus. And you receive these tithes and offerings and command the blessing. You look down from heaven and you see the hearts of men. And you, and you do test the righteous. And you do delight in the prosperity of your servants. And so we receive from your hand everything that is required for us to advance in your kingdom in this hour. However that is to come, multiplication and increase so that you might be glorified in all we do and all we say. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, beloved, it's Valentine's weekend, so go greet someone. Tell them how much you love them in Jesus, and we want to speak to those online. Yes. Amen. 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 Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Super Bowl Sunday, if that's what you're into. Who's playing? I have no idea. Oh, we need I mean, Pastor I should, Brian but in, to know about yeah, that. It's okay. But I think we're going to have... We have the Rams here from cancer. California. Yeah. yeah. Somebody from Ohio. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hey, you know what's cool, though? And you're probably the same way. There's more Valentine's spirit in here than a Super Bowl Sunday spirit. Amen. There's a love, there's Amen. A love of God that's going to be poured into every heart. Amen. I mean, right and now, and wherever you are... So just continue to receive that Whoa. love that was being poured yeah, out. He yeah, is yeah. the one that seeks after yeah. us. He comes to seek and save that which is lost. Yeah. And he comes for our lost hearts. Whoa. Because he is ravaged by our love. And he's drawing us back to him. And we want to say to you, Father, thank you so much for Jesus, yes, our yes, true yes. Valentine yes, gift. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Amen. All right, come on in, everyone. Start find your place. We want to greet and welcome. Listen, uh, uh, we want to thank God for our entire church, all of Jubilee, that made 
yesterday's memorial service uh, a, a real collection of love and celebration of the life of Gregory Kuski and a really prophetic moment. And for the men gathering, it was a double header. We had a lot of things happening yesterday. Yes, 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 yes. And Gregory's family, welcome to church today. Yeah, we today. bless you guys. It's just Thank a you. blessing to have you here. I keep having a double take because I look over there and I think it's Gregory. So, bless you guys. You're going to go home with a blessing. And for the uh, Jerusalem family that I've seen here, yeah, thank yeah, you blessings. so much. It is an honor to get to worship with you here in America because I know that you are carrying something special that we need that's coming from the land. And, and we receive that. We receive the love for God's people. And thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Norco, thank you for pressing us in, opening our heart to step into the Song of Solomon. Amen. I mean, it's all about Amen. love, right? God so loved that he gave. Jesus loved us, so he was willing to offer himself so he could have a bride. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You know, you know in fact, it just, I look out here and I just see everybody just with God's, God's like hovering glory over your head. Just his... His, his favor and his delight and his expectancy and his joy. and You know, in Ephesians, it says that, um, that we're to... Um, let me just find it because it's just really rocked and I think it fits this. In Ephesians 5, I don't know that we'll get all this far, but it, I just love this. Um, okay. Oh, it, it says, uh, verse 23, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. That's us, the living body. He's the one coming to deliver us and delight himself in us. And it says, that he might, sanct the he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and well blemished. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. So for no one, no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. This was just as the Lord does the church. He nourishes and cherishes. So let this love anointing, let the Holy Spirit outpouring, just soak us. Get us in that, uh, that posture, right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. I think we're, we're good. We're going to keep moving on, prayer and fasting on, Amen. on Wednesday, ministry in the Lord on Wednesday night. <clears throat> and Gregory closed his own service yesterday <laughs> and sent us all out <clears throat> to begin to do the works of Jesus. Mm. And mm. no matter where we are, but, you know, I had an interesting word that the Lord gave me. He said, in Jubilee, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Mm -hmm. you, the Lord may be putting you in a place to minister to somebody where you feel like mm -hmm. it's maybe not that important or whatever. You know, because we all think in terms of I need to be rich and famous for this to be seen by God. But God doesn't see that way. He looks on the heart. Yeah. And... And he said, yes, don't despise the day of small beginnings. I was watching some figure skating. And, you know, you see these athletes that can make things look like it's so easy and so beautiful. And I had this feeling like, oh, I'm going to go out and do that tomorrow. <laughs> and, and the Lord said to me, he interrupted, and he said, uh, 
maybe not that soon. So <laughs> Exactly. I I believe that he wants us just to be able to start moving within our gifting and talents and not be discouraged because we're not winning a gold medal, but not to just not do anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we feel like it's not valuable. Every little thing is valuable. Yeah, yeah. And he, yeah. And he sees in secret, right? Amen. He doesn't see the open. He sees the secret. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Cammie. That was right. That, when that was what Gregory carried, that very anointing. Imagine, um, yeah. I'm going to take us to Ephesians 5. Uh, and I'm just going to begin at verse 18, and I'll go through 21. I believe this is a personal part of call for ministry. This is what is probably central, the beginning point, and the center point, and the main point. And if we are, each would just accept some of this, or receive it as a new charge, or, or reawakening. You know, we started doing psalms, and... Uh, we went through the whole 150 psalms last month. We do, we're in the psalms again this month. You can go on our website to find out what, where we are today. We just did, uh, we're doing Psalm 30 through 35. You can do them five, day, five a week day with us. So you can do one a day. You can go backwards, wherever the Lord leads. I think the word of the Lord is psalms are the, the what he said to me was, you put something in my people's hands so they can speak with their mouth and hear with their heart. So the praise would enlarge from what we would normally carry. And it's, I, I want to just testify. I, my life's rocked. I did it one month. And it was like my whole, you know, it says in Isaiah 61, he will give uh, the, the, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I felt the garment. It's on me. I started singing a lot more in my home. I started just singing, making melody in my heart. I started having this this uh, sense of praise. Now, why praise? God said to us, this is the year of the ambush. Second Chronicles 20, 22. And when they began to sing, the Lord set ambushes. And he caused the entire nations that had come to drive Israel out of God's possession, his inherit, their inheritance, to which they were, they were covenantly unlocked unable to respond in prior seasons, and now they were outnumbered and outgunned. And God says, you won't need to fight in this battle, or literally, to fight in this battle, you'll need to see salvation. You'll need to get your eyes off the enemy and put your eyes on me, and you're going to praise me. And so we began last year learning to say, the Lord is, we praise the Lord for your mercies endure forever. We praise you, Lord, for your mercies endure forever. We praise you, Lord. And then now in 2022, Second Chronicles 2022, we are in 2022, it says, when they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes. And it's going to take two more verses, maybe even two more years, for us to get to the point where they finally see what God did with what their praise brought. So you see, I'm getting so distracted by God. He's messing me up. All I, I'm just seeing him all places. I'm, I, I'm starting to think, wow, this, I, I get what David was happening. He spent all this time with sheep and with praise. And so when he met the giant that everybody had spent 30 days on a giant tour, now frightened out of their nits, you know, out of their wits, that every time Goliath came out to make his challenge, they all ran into holes. And that was repeated day after day after day after day. David was just delivering cheese, small beginnings, his dad said, I want you to go deliver the cheese and check how the war is. Give me back a report. And, you know, he just said, what are we, what are we doing here? I think we are got this mixed up. That giant doesn't have a covenant. The giant has no covenant. The giant cannot defy the armies of the living God. But the armies of the living God had forgot they were the armies of the living God. And they thought they were outgunned and outnumbered. So he just got in there and just did what he was always doing. And it's no different than the bear or the lion. It's just God who's going to do this for us. So, so when God said, now just start singing. And when you start singing, I'll start letting ambushes. He's doing it. 
But believe, go back to Second Chronicles 20. It's through two other verses. First he, first he takes the, Am, the you know, Ammon and Moab, and they fight against uh, the Edom, uh, uh, the, uh, Esau's descendants. They kill them, then they turn on each other. Every confederation of darkness has no power to hold itself if God but just vibrates a little bit. If he just undulates and the, the desire of the nation begins to stand up and it starts to shake everything and all the nations begin coming to the desire of the nation. That's Haggai. That's Hebrews. But it's filled with the praises of God's people. So Ephesians is just, I'm really, I mean, I have to apologize, and not to you, but just uh, to myself, thinking, Lord, wow. I mean, it's a garment of praise. And why does he give us a garment of praise? Anybody remember? For depression. Discouragement. I'm overwhelmed. I can't see, I can't see out of this place. I, there's no hope. There's no way to get into the future. He gives it to that state of being because that's the remedy to despair and fear and anxiety. So here's... Here's something, I just think, I just, I'm so excited about this. <clears throat> Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So dissipation, uh, excess, is, is, is not where the profit of the, of the victory is going to come. It's, it's in the infilling of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So being filled with the Holy Spirit is in speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in the heart to the Lord. Or it's learning the language of heaven. It's speaking the words of God. It's, the, it's, it's singing to the things that God will hear. And if you... Jump back to chapter 4. Let me just show you this because this was a, you, you would have already read it in reading it. Verse 29, 429. If, can we go to 429? I'm sorry. But I, I want you to understand something about Holy Spirit. It, we really, Holy Spirit's really present and he wants to fill. And he loves to pour into our heart love, especially in the measure of the trials we're tr walking through. So if you're in a big trial, guess what? You get a lot of love today. Big love, lots of love, great love, yay, lots of love, inseparable love, to, to removing every obstacle that's keeping you from being loved inside the beloved. So here is advice, again, four begins to set the order of the church, and on, onward, learning how to walk. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. God has charged us as the living members of the body of Christ to be his mouthpiece. In Psalm 45, the Lord is, he is, he is more beautiful than all the sons of men because grace is poured upon his lips, therefore God will bless him forever. So learning the language of heaven, learning to speak Jesus. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but what such as... Go, you, such as good for necessary edification and may impart grace to the hearers. Rosie Bates on our staff meeting the other day. She said, you know, if I don't hear God saying something, I'm just stop. I don't say anything anymore. <laughs> because otherwise I just say me. And that's impatient. And, you know, so, you know, it's, it's so funny. The re in fact, while we were in that staff meeting, this was just sidebar for Jan and family. Uh, Rosie remembered that Gregory stood up, and, and I remembered when he did this. It was when you greeted the people after coming back from Israel after 16 years. And you came up and you greeted everybody. And, and, and uh, Gregory said, I just have a word for somebody. I have a word for somebody, or for a lot of people. He said, it doesn't matter. What's happened doesn't matter. You just start. Start now. It doesn't matter. And I thought to myself, and, and then she testified how, how profound that had, had affected fa family and so. So I thought, you know, I, I want to find that. So I asked uh, 
uh, Brian, could you see if you could find where that was on, on? So he was looking, but he found the clip that we showed last Sunday, or, or last yesterday. Maybe we'll show that clip at the end. Can you do that one? No, not that one. The, the one I showed last yesterday. Okay. The last one. Last one. Okay. Uh, we may not, but if you can have it ready, I won't mess you up later. Now, God bless Brian and Diana and the, and the whole media team. I mean, really, and all of you believe for making such a presence. But anyway, I went to go see it and found the other one, which began to be called the call to this posture of worship unto the Lord. It says in, that we are going to receive the praise from God and not from men. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna seek honor from God and not from men. So this Holy Spirit, He's all about Jesus, right? Yeah. His, only, his only job is to glorify the Son, take everything the Father gave to the Son and everything the Son wants to announce. He announces it. He's the one who brings the presence of Jesus into the room. He's the one that allows Jesus to be felt. He's the one that moves with healing. He's the one that moves with power. Jesus is the one who supplies us with the Holy Spirit, and he does miracles. And he just wants to do them right now. He's doing them right now. They're in the room. They're in the room. But it's Jesus. So he's saying, okay, don't um, learn the language. And then it goes, do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So no matter how bad you feel, no matter how bad it looks, I want to tell you something. The Holy Spirit is sealed to you. It means he goes wherever you go. He sees whatever you see. He does whatever you do. So one thing that affects the Holy Spirit more than anything is the language of the mouth. And whatever comes out of the mouth affects him. It, this, when corrupt communication comes out, when speaking evil of brethren, it says it grieves him. It grieves him. So don't grieve him. And then it goes on, and I call this the, 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 the sandwich. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So I'm carrying, we're, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the conversation of my lips that comes out of my heart is affecting him. And if I'm, and so it talks about on, on verse uh, 30, watch your, watch your mouth. Verse 32, watch your mouth. Why? Because you don't want to cause the Holy Spirit to be grieved. But be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. See, we forgive one another in Christ. We don't forgive one another because we deserve to be forgiven or control the others so they'll never hurt us again. We just release them, let them go, as God did in Christ as he forgave us. Verse chapter 5, jump into one, verse 1. I don't, I'm not going to take the whole chapter. But listen to these words, the first two verses. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. We're sons and daughters of God. And walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Okay, Lord, I'll follow you. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are no, not, not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. There are two, two, two classes of people in the earth today. 
They're the sons of disobedience and they're sons of light. And the sons of disobedience are, un, under the, under, are inside the spirit of disobedience, of the, the Satan. They're, they're in the rule of him. They've been, they're in rebellion. And the sons of light have been born again, and, the spirit, and light has come, and the father of lights, and they're born again. And there are some sons of light who act as sons of disobedience because they're immature. They've never learned the language of heaven. They've never learned to speak God's word. They've not restrained themselves. They've just continued in their flesh and soulish ways. They're still sons of light. They're just immature. They're babes, the Bible calls them, non-speaking. So he says, therefore, don't be partakers with them. For we were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We get to walk a different way. We just get to walk a different way. It doesn't matter what happened to you. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter who's doing what. There's no call for evil against evil. Just walk as a child of light. For the fruit of the Spirit. Now we're talking Holy Spirit. It's all goodness. And I wasn't going to do this. I was going to do it. Then I wasn't going to do it. And I had it all settled. I could do a really short little clip. And then here I am. <laughs> I'm going to try to get us full of the Spirit. <laughs> so we're disengaging. If you hear any of the words that you go, oh, wow. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to change my lip. I want to change the way I speak. Don't worry about what happened yesterday. Start today. Start today. It doesn't matter. Just start today. You know, start to speak. The, 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 we used to call it the language of Canaan. Because Canaan was the land of promise. It's the land, or it's the heavenly language. It's the ways of, the way God speaks. All the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So everything of the Spirit that comes out is inside of, it will bring forth goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. There are men, again, that's why we pray, right? I'm, I'm wanting to discover. I want to learn the way that, 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 that makes you smile. I want to find what you, makes you want to respond to me. I, I, want to, I, want to, I, want to, I want to be someone you like to, to hang out. I, I mean, I just want to find out what's acceptable. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Now, I want to, now oh, let me read this because it's a little, it's kind, kind of be kind of confusing. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Beloved, I believe more than anything is the heart that I am to expose is mine. And I'm not trying to point out, in fact, what Diana with the song, new song we came is out of Psalm 15. And it's very clear about our mouths and not speaking evil of another. But, but let, me, let me share how this works. It's, it's, not, it's very simple. I wake up more times than I want. And I'm in, uh, I'm worrying, thinking about this. How do I get on top of that? What am I going to do today? Sometimes it's big, and there are probably reason to worry. Sometimes they're tr trivial, and they're not really, really any reason. And, but the problem is, is I get, I start to try to solve it inside me. You ever done that? You try to outthink those thoughts? You try to solve the problem by looking at the problem and stare at it another way. You know, just anyway, what happens in our relationship though is I don't know I'm doing it, but I start withdrawing. I get thoughtful. <laughs> Guys, you ever had your wife say that? Yeah, you, you look, you, you sound thoughtful. You can, meaning I wasn't, I'm not present. I'm pondering, I'm occupied, I'm trying to do something. Now, here's the problem I am. But now I'm embarrassed because what I'm worrying about is really trivial or really selfish or really something about me that I really don't want anybody to know about. Now, what I've learned, and I only learned it because of this verse, and I learned it many, many years ago, and it's helped me a hundred billion times. If Cammie asks me, what are you thinking about? I tell her. 
If she says you're, you're thoughtful, that's my invitation to expose the darkness that's worrying in my heart and expose it and say, well, you know, uh, this, I got this text just for sleep and, the, and it's just made this feeling and, and I don't want to have this feeling. And, and, but, it's, but because I brought it out into the light, whatever, make, whatever is made manifest by the light is light. So the darkness that now was controlling my thoughts and trying to you know, get me into this funk or keep me in this fear or keep me you know, in this, I brought it to the light. And it just like, pfft. Isn't it true? That's why confession is good for the soul. That's why when you bring something to the light, it loses its power. That's why you don't hide things from the people you love. You try to be honest, especially when you get caught. Because, because, beloved, the only way I can come out of wherever I am, and now I'll go to God, is God has to catch me. And the only way God catches me is if I can have a moment of sobriety where he can penetrate me with the piercing of his word, maybe, where the Spirit of God began to ponder, point out something, and I go, oh, I see. Now I'm caught. Most of us spend our life trying not to be caught. I try to get caught. I tell the Lord all the time, search me, try me, look into my fearful, anxious thoughts in my heart and, and, and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the path of life. When we, when we engaged last year to humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways with the promise that he would then hear from heaven, he would forgive our sin and he would heal our land. You, know, it, you could just feel the kind of, you know, the soul is like, uh, wait a second, I've just spent years on therapy that I don't have any wicked ways in me. And now you're telling me I've got to repent of wicked ways. Now I really feel bad about myself. I just don't, I can't go there. Well, it's not, everything about you is wicked. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, dude, really, what righteousness is getting you to heaven? Wickedness is idolatry, it's selfishness, it's anything. Now, God, now you're really getting me in trouble. Please help me. <laughs> but yet David, he would say, search me. And if there's something in me that's, that's leading to you know, idolatry, pain, hurt, woundedness, bring it, to, to, then, then, then to lead me in the path of everlasting life. That's all it meant is humble yourself. So when Diana says, everybody raise your hand and everybody prays, that isn't because she's the boss. She's the leader to lead us to the king. And this is humility before the king Jesus. I bound the knee. In fact, if I was in the eastern, it would be exactly more like this. That's what worship is. Humility. Pray. Be honest. That's what all, that, that word in uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14, pray. My people will humble themselves and pray. It means be it, take an honest appraisal of yourself. God isn't really interested in other people. <laughs> I only have authority over this little heart. Right, you know, okay, we're talking about marriage. It's Valentine's Day. We get married. Cammie's a different person than me. She's weird. <laughs> She's got needs that I don't have. She's got desires that I don't have. And, and it would just mess everything up. So I, I'd go to the Lord, you know. I thought, I'm going to get some help here. And as soon as I get to, get to the Lord, and I begin to point out all her faults. I would get no help. In fact, he would, just, he would just put it all back on me. He told me once, he said, the, the way you treat your wife is the way I'll treat you. Whew. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I went and got roses, right? <laughs> you know, it's just, oh, it must be Valentine's Day. Spirit of love is in the house.
Lord, help us. I need to be honest. And then I need to seek your face. There is no righteousness in me, but everything's perfect in you. And, the fa- and in the face of Jesus Christ is the glory of God that when that light is seen, shines in my heart and liberates me from everything that is not of you. I need to see your face. I need to see your face. And when I see your face and I see who you are, I finally can see who I am. And I am not the man that deserves or is capable. I can't measure up. All I can do is receive the gracious gift of salvation and forgiveness and healing. And I can keep myself from things, but I can't change myself. That's who you are, the changer. And I stay engaged and I worship. And if we hold our place in a simple little day of prayer, a little moment, a little hour, alone with God, then before we realize it, heaven has engaged with us. Heaven has locked eyes. Heaven is responding because it's hearing. A humble prayer, honest, seeking of the face and turning from the wicked way that's being exposed. And heaven comes and says, forgiveness, it's all right. You're mine. What I did is done. It's forever. Remittance, there is no offering for sin. You're accepted in my beloved. And heaven receives me and heals me and begins to change the world around me. Just that little teeny moment. Mm. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead. Christ will give you light. See, because we are sons in Christ and because we've been given our whole identity is in Christ and we come through Christ and he's over us, he's growing us up to be like him through revelation and tribulation. Through seeing Christ in his glory and then having to deal with the glory. So, so he's, wake up! You gotta get, we're light, we're the children of light. Come into the light, wake up. Rise from the dead. See, these are, these are elements of praise. And they're coming so strong. We're going to get so, you're going to get so good at praise because there's so many ambushes God's got ready to release. And he does the ambushes in the secret while we worship him in secret to bring an open reward at a later date. But he just starts fascinating me. And I'm just, so the Psalms, they release the garment of praise. I'm singing, I'm declaring, and, and I'm not trying to understand or make conscious decisions. I have not tried to make a conscious decision. This wasn't even my idea to do the Psalms. I'm a revelator. I like to go into heaven and see things like that. And the Psalms is like David just going, I love you, kill my enemies. Why won't you do it faster? Help me. You're good. You do not look upon wickedness. You will deal with the injustice. Why do the nations rage? Why do the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth, they set themselves and the rulers take counsel against you, the Lord, and your anointed. And then the Spirit of God, he was a listener because the Spirit of God said, yeah, <laughs> I know I'm laughing all the way. The Lord sits in heaven and he laughs. He'll hold them in derision. He'll mock the whole efforts. All the dis- oh, that's why I was going to read Psalm 34 for us. It just had all that stuff in there. Nations, nations, nations. What are you doing? Bow, kiss, serve. So I'm not going to leave the subject. Let me keep going. Uh, Baba Shea. So therefore, Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Any action that does not regard God in the action is a foolish choice. God is seen. God is here. God is present. But I'm accepted only in the beloved. I'm not going to go there and try to think I can be good enough to be welcomed or that I've been so good and God's not really paid, paid his fair share. Just let it go. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Every day will take possession of your day 
Evil will take the rule of that day, but we can redeem it. How? Don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay, I know I struggle with that. What's the will of God for my life? What's the will of God at this moment? Should I go yes or no? Do I go forward? Do I go backwards? What's the will of God? And finally, God gave me this simple, t- here's the will of God for you. I go, oh, yay, I can't wait. Is it, is it for this moment? He says, no, it's for all the time. No matter what, this is what my will is. I said, I'd love to hear it. Second, Chronic, Second Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. You cannot jot it down. I said, I'm all ears. Rejoice always. You mean that I don't qualify? You, you think I'm supposed to be rejoicing always? Then he brings Philippians 4, in case I didn't hear it well enough. Rejoice always. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. You see, we're living in a different kingdom, and we have a citizenship in a heavenly realm, and we're not bound by the controls of man, and we're not to let depression take us into oppression and into (laughs) paralyzation. Rejoice! 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 Okay? Pray without ceasing. Pray all the time. Talk to me. Just have a conversation. Include me. You got masks on till Wednesday. I mean, I love masks in Trader Joe's. I just said, well, that's all my good old radical. I can't do that with a mask on, you know? Take advantage. Re- pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Everything. Be thankful in everything, over everything, for God, if, under God, for God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. For This is the will of God for you, for you, for you, in Christ Jesus. See, the key is I'm in Christ Jesus. I don't get to rationalize or justify my actions based on the circumstances I'm walking in because I'm inside Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the majesty on high, totally triumphant and victorious. And I'm learning to live in his place with his language. So, he's, so it goes on back to the thing, now that i meddled enough. Don't be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Oh, you can start to understand what the Holy Spirit, you know. I, I, I need the fruit of the Spirit more than I need the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. You know, I tried using the gifts on Cammie, and they just don't work. <laughs> Try to deliver her, prophesy over her, speak over this, and she just goes, come on, you're a phony baloney. There's no love here. You're a noisy gong and a tinkling cymbal. I mean, stop it. I've done all that. It just doesn't work. And I told you before, I pray to God, and He corrects me. So I leave her alone. Ba- basically... She's God's favorite. Well, you're all God's favorite. You see, he's not ashamed to call us his brethren. Even in the whatever we're at. He said, no, no, you're my brethren. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm claim, I've laid claim to you, and you're going to all become like me into my likeness and my image. And we're just on it. We're on it. We're on it. We're on it. Seek me and find me. Or get desperate and need me. I'll get you. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This is the verse I wanted to get to. I believe if we would receive this charge from the Lord today, this is the, this is the secret place. It's, I'm to get up in the morning, and in my day, I'm to occupy my my thoughts, my mouth, my heart, and use psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and make melody in my heart to the Lord. Imagine, just, just imagine, because it's not easy. Everybody finds a place, and we, st- we, we put a circle, and there we are, or we're taking a walk, however, we, where you meet the Lord, and you say, Lord, I'm just gonna, I, need to, I need to declare some psalms to you. And I want to release some hymns. Hymns are like psalms, but not as elaborate. We, you know, and, and I want 
I, I'm glad to get into spiritual songs. Spiritual songs are unearthly songs. They're, they're, they're heavenly language songs. They can be tongues. They could be just, just, I love you, Jesus. I love you. I worship you. I praise you. You're victorious. And they're, they're just being kind of carried by the Spirit. And make melody in your heart to the Lord. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. Imagine, just imagine. Imagine if your and my hearts were under the, under the, under the, under the influence of this kingdom, in this kingdom place. None of the news networks get to heaven. No internet connection in heaven. But heaven is laughing, holding in derision, moving triumphantly, sending the undulations of the desire of all nations, moving everything to completion. And he's, I want to see that. And I'm sorry, beloved, I, 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 that's all I see. I have to get up and start again every morning. I have to start every morning, brand new. That's why it doesn't matter what happened yesterday. It just means to start new. And then I start seeing it. The Psalms give me courage. They've started to create a sense of, you know, if you read the Psalms, well, all 150 out loud, you cannot be worried about what's happening in the immediacy of any of the international crises because it becomes absolutely apparent that the Lord is on his throne. He's ruling in the nations. He is taking them to the desire of all nations and he will destroy the wicked. He will destroy the wicked. The unrighteous will not rule. The scepter of the wicked will not rest upon the land allotted to the righteous. But David, 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 read the Psalms. This blew me away. He never, he's always in trouble and he's always asking for help. Some of them we know the trouble. Some of them, because it gives you the heading. Others, you don't know what the trouble was. But by reading it, you know he's in trouble. I'm a, no one likes me. No one listens to me. No one helps me. I'm all alone. But yet, I'm not alone. Because you're my Lord. Because you hear me. Because you've answered my prayer. I mean, Psalms is like spiritual therapy. <laughs> but here's the deal. David, you, you, I went through him. He never names a person. Not even the name of a king. Because he doesn't see the person as the key. He sees this is a, this is a power struggle. A, group of, a large group of people don't want you to rule over their lives. So they're doing everything to put away, to cast your cords behind them, to break your break your, your rules and ways and they're just saying there's no God and they can do whatever they want and they don't think and they live in ease and everybody looks at they don't think you ever see anything but I know you see everything and, and they can go ahead and act that way as long as they want but you're going to take it down because there is not any wickedness that's going to live forever in your presence. Now listen, what has it done to me? It's changed the way I see the outcome. The outcomes are rigged. It's like walk, watching the Super Bowl know who's going to win. I already know who's winning. Jesus. In fact, it's not even a battle. The only battle probably is for me to get my eyes on Jesus and then receive what he's doing and go, yeah, 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 yeah. And instead of going, oh no, Goliath, whoa, everybody to your caves. The little shepherd boy goes, hey, what in the world are we talking about? Why are, what? How come? This is a giant. This is a man. It's a flesh and blood. He has no covenant. I'll go take care of him. That's what's going to rise up out of the praisers. And then he says, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalms, hymns, spirit songs, declaring the truth, praising God, raising his voice. And then in the midst of it, I got to say, Oh, Lord, I just want to take a moment now and to thank you. I need to thank you for everything. The word for, if that freaks you out, literally means over. I'm going to put thanksgiving over everything. Over a bad day, a good day, a bad situation, a bad act. I'm going to say thank you. You're God. Something powerful is happening. Something wonderful. I'm rejoicing and I'm praying without ceasing. And in everything, I'm giving thanks 
Seriously, beloved, this is so radical Christianity. I'm just saying, why not try it? And you don't do it in front of people. You don't do it for people to see you. You don't do it to try to control other people. You don't do it to do anything other than change my heart, oh Lord. Let me be apparently influenced. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Whoa. The way of the cross was to go low, to be a servant, to submit to the, even the death of the cross, to go low. It's not rights-based. It's submission-ruled. If you go through the rest of Ephesians, every relationship starts with the one that's under, charging them to submit, because that's the greatest level of authority than the one that's over, charging them to remember they've got someone over them that they better realize they're going to answer to. So wives, submit to your husbands. Uh, children, honor your parents and obey them. Employees, servants, obey your master, with, with, not with eye service, but with sincerity. And all of them say, as unto the Lord, as unto the Lord, as unto the Lord, as unto the Lord. And then it'll say, husbands, love your wives. That's harder than submitting. Parents, raise your children. Don't provoke them to wrath. That's harder than just saying, okay, dad, what did you say? I'll do it. No, don't treat your employees with, 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 with intimidation. And don't, don't take things out of them and don't get more from them because you've got someone that's got... So, it's all learning. It's all a reigning, ruling, change, transformation. And here he is. He just says, here, you can't do this, honey. You got to get full of the Spirit. And you got to let the song ring, sing. And let the thanksgiving ring. And then just watch me. Watch me. You say, where's the strategy in this? Is it in the Bible? 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm just going to show you this because I got myself in trouble again. First Peter, I can feel it. I use the word submission. That, that's just not something you're supposed to use in America. And it's not about marriage. It's about anybody. You just, nobody tells anybody what to do. But listen to this. Chapter 3, verse 1. We can go to that and we'll be, we'll be done. Wives, uh, like wives, likewise, be submissive to your husbands. And this, beloved, I, I, now I'm totally out of uncharted water. This was not a thought in my mind, so... So don't take your red shirts off and throw them at me. Just listen to strategies. It's time to discover the new. It's time to release the true authority of the kingdom of God into the earth, in our families. Wives, be submissive to your own husbands. That even if some of them do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. You see, who we are before others affects who they will become, not how we are. I mean, who we are, like he said, well, he explains. Uh, when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, the fear of God, everything is unto God in the fear of God. Submit to one another in the fear of God. Uh, do not let it be the adornment of merely outward arranging of the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Uh, don't let it only be that, and don't let it be, you know, it's not saying you can't braid your hair, because otherwise you can't wear clothes. But it goes on, it says, uh, rather, rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart, the inner man, the inward man, with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. That was Gregory. A gentle and a quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God. He said, I want God's attention. I want to find what is acceptable. I want him to find favor toward me. I want him to like being with me. When I first learned praise, I would say, Lord, I want you to be glad you saved me by the gratitude that my lips give. For in this manner, in former times, the holy women who, and don't, ladies, don't worry, men are going to get there. It's just a moment. It's just, God's always fair. 
No, he's not. He's just. So he's going to get the men harder. The holy women who trusted in God. You see, that's all based on my relationship with God. And it's all being, I, I can go as far as I can go as far as I am in God. And if I'm in trust, I can say, well, you know what? And Cammie's had to do this for all her life. Lord, you didn't tell me you were marrying, I was marrying an idiot. <laughs> you, you, this guy, this guy, he's, he's frightening to follow. Lately, that's all I say to Jesus. And you are so, you make me so afraid following you. For in former times, holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are, if you do good and not afraid with any terror. It's time to take ownership for our actions and not point our actions as a response to someone else's action. It's time to take ownership for our actions and acknowledge the actions that I respond in are coming from within. So I'm not going to be... Uh, uh, so, so here they are. These, uh, go back, please. Uh, they, you, the whole way Jesus went through the earth, it says when he, was, when he suffered, he didn't utter threats. When he was reviled, he didn't revile in return. But he always kept entrusting himself to, to, God, to the one who judges righteously. See, that's why David didn't have to name uh, Absalom in the song that he's crying out for deliverance from the many that have come against him. He just started saying, God, I know you, how to, you know how to sort everything, so you're sorting it. So they, uh, do good. He said, uh, commit yourself, your souls to the Lord in doing good. You see, there's nothing that overthrows evil faster than doing good. There's nothing that destroys an enemy than loving him. And if that enemy is your husband, but you're not doing it, you go, I can't do that. It's a tweak. My brain won't give good to someone who's not being good back to me. He says, well, don't do it. Don't do it for him. Do it for Jesus. Just do it to Jesus. Jesus, this is all for you. And I'm just going to kind of step into a supernatural position and do something good instead of bad. I'm not going to retaliate. I'm going to release. I'm going to be a blessing. And I'm not going to do it to get a change. I'm just going to do it unto you. I'm going to do it unto you. And watch the favor of God just start hitting your heart. You can have a rock and roll time. And you, but you may have to, you have to be honest. Sometimes you're doing it to manipulate the circumstance to change the man. That's okay. God will say, well, it won't work. But... Appreciate the effort. You know, come on, right? You know, let, let's be honest. I am married 40 years. I'm the same man she met 40 years ago. I have not changed. I'm learning not to. I, I'm like David in Psalm 18. I've tried to keep myself from my iniquities. I've tried to watch them because I can't change them. I just kind of recognize, well, that's what I typically do. And, and I, Gammy will tell me. Aren't you enjoying this Valentine's Day? <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway, let's finish and then um, praise you, Jesus. Likewise, husbands, likewise, husbands, likewise. Dwell with them with understanding. Who, man, man, we're dead. <laughs> we're just dead. Come on. I mean, who do we think about but ourselves? Dwell with them with understanding. Giving honor to the wife is the weaker vessel, meaning her frame is more delicate. I used to say, I'm, I'm a bulldozer, and she's a little shovel. You know, she, she would work in the, 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 the rose garden, and I would be making a driveway. And I want her to be as big and strong as I am. But that's, no, 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 no. Dwell with them as a weaker vessel, as heirs together. Now, here's the key. As the grace of life, I don't ask Cammie to do what I do. I don't expect Cammie to rise, respond any other way than the way God's asking her to respond. But we're one, and it's a struggle at times because, you know, it's kind of like, well, keep up with me anyway. Or she's saying, you're going too fast. Give me a break. And really, the only answer in both of those cases, let's stop. And let's recover. We're striving. Strife 
is not a good idea. <laughs> striving is driving. We're driving, we're striving, we're coming out of rest, we're coming out of the kingdom, we're getting into, into and oh, just pause. And then we tell each other, I love you, and forgive us, and all that. Because what happens is, we don't want our prayers to be hindered. Oh, there's so much in that. If we act in our authority in an in inappropriate manner in, in the eyes of God, God says, well, that, I'm not going to reward that. Great idea, but not, that's not me. I'm not in that at all. And, it's a, you know, and so, so, so I'm learning everything that, is, everything that I'm trying to find is in, is in response to God and me and me and God. And anything that I'm going through is intentional to lead me back to God, to drive me toward him. And I don't blame the things I'm going through. I just call out on the Lord to help me and have mercy. I need mercy. And I humble myself, and I try to pray, and I try to seek his face. And this praise, praise begins to just give a sense of like, hey, we're going to make it. Jesus, you're great. If I never get out of the problem, you're still great. If things never change, you're still great. If they kill us all, you're still great. You're the Lord. You're the King. You're the Deliverer. You're the Redeemer. And, and he really believes that. I start believing that. And all of a sudden, the whole screen changes. The credits change. The movie maker changes. Who's writing the script and, and who's starring in the film. Before it was dark horror zombies. Now all of a sudden, it's Jesus, the leading man. And I'm the co-star. We're the co-star. In fact, that's the next thing that's going to rock the world. It's the whole body of Christ is going to fall in love with each other. Not because we're all become like each other, but because we're one body. Jesus, I thank you so much. I don't know what you did. I just thank you so much that you're so intentional. There's every one of us in here is is a precious member of your living body. You love, you cherish. Most of us are wounded, broken, and a lot of us are carrying, you know, just trauma-related living. And we don't want to. And many times we try to do everything we can to stop being like we are. But you said, Father, by the Spirit, through Apostle Paul, in Ephesians, that we were chosen before time to be holy and without blame before you, Father, in Jesus. And you predestined us to be adopted as sons according to your good pleasure, which you purposed to according to the, to the praise of the glory of your grace by which you made us accepted in the Beloved. We return right now to this point of acceptance. We know we've stepped into some fray. We've spoken of some tender places, questionable thoughts even. But we don't want to try to solve any of it right now. We just need to return back to you. You're good and you're merciful. We praise you, Lord, for your mercy endures forever. You have the power to redeem all. You have the ability to step into any place and call anyone into faith and call anyone out of insanity and craziness. So why are we, we, we just worship you. We praise you. We praise you for what you're doing right now in this moment. We thank you for how, how, how large you are. You can come up with me. Rise up with the praise. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What happened yesterday doesn't matter. Be beloved. Be beloved. Beloved. Be loved. Be loved. Be loved. Oh, you, I may have not touched on the horror you live in, the tribulation you're walking through. I may not have touched any of your anguish. But I still want to say the Holy Spirit is being poured out into our heart 
so that we can, you can, be loved. Be loved. Be loved. I love you, Jesus. I receive your love. I receive your love. I receive your tender touch. I receive your awesome charge over our life. I receive that you have a high calling over each of us. I receive that you do not tolerate wickedness in our lives, but neither do you require that we be perfect in our own actions. You just call for submission. And the highest submission is our submission to the Son and acknowledging there is no salvation but the Son and there is no way, way out but the Son. And there's no answer but the Son. And Jesus Christ is everything. So we return. You are more than we need. You're greater than the, 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 the problem. And you're stronger than our enemies. And you're, and you're going to unveil yourself in the midst of your church through the love, kindness, gentleness, forbearance, tenderheartedness, the spirit, righteousness, and peace, and joy, the fruit, the, the praise, the, the, the whole experience. Now, if you want a baptism from heaven like that, stand up. You want it? God's ready. It's Valentine's Day. Beloved, beloved, beloved. Mm. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Rest upon your people. Guide us into the light. Fill our mouths with language of heaven. Engage our praise. Power our prayers. And bring roaring, thunderous thanksgiving. Let relationships be restored through forgiveness. And only by forgiveness can they ever be. Let love be poured into all hearts first to be received by the living one, the Lord, the one who died for us and rose and washing us. And then that love spread abroad, un, unintimidated by the actions of others in families, in work environments. And may the Lordship of Jesus be always felt in every situation that we know we're not alone, he will never leave us and he'll never fail us. And whatever he's requiring of us, his grace is sufficient. And his power is being made perfect in our weakness. His strength is being increased. And may we go out with joy now. Be led forth with peace. As the mountains and the hills break forth with singing. And the trees of the field clap their hands. Knowing that no word of God ever spoken and ever heard is void, but it will accomplish what it was sent for, and it will prosper in the very thing it was delivered for. We bless you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We receive you, Holy Spirit. And this baptism of love, pour into us until we are full and overflowing with the love of God in all things, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you guys. Thank you. Do you guys want to hear Gregory's video? Yes. All right. Okay. Good. Thank you for flashing that. I, I, it's two minutes. So just sit one down. Go ahead. Okay. And by the way, thanks for coming tonight. It's really nice to see you all here. 
We lift our hearts to you, O Lord, and we say, like uh, Isaiah said, if not who, who will go? And we say to you, Lord, we will go. And it doesn't really matter where we go. It could be near or far. But nonetheless, in our hearts, when we reach out to that person that needs a helping hand to be lifted up, to be pulled together, to have an encouraging word, to hear a word from the Lord, let's just do it. It's, it's, it's not that hard. You know, um, we just love you, Lord. We pass, <laughs> we pass our baton on to whoever's out here waiting. Receive, receive, receive from the Lord all that he has for you to do because great is your reward yes. in heaven. In heaven. We don't need to have such great rewards here on earth, but I sure do want to live in Calarosa in heaven. <laughs> so thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. Thank you that you gave Jan and me 16 years. 16 years. And we just give all the glory to you because uh, we're just uh, humble folk getting along. And we love you. And we love all the staff here at Jubilee that took care of us and helped us make this presentation tonight. And uh, we thank you so much for uh, life. Yes, life and life abundant, life and life abundantly, in Jesus' name.